It is outstanding how the followers of Muhammad, even in this 21st century, continue to be in denial of all facts shown to them that contradict their Quran. Even more disturbing are the instances where the Quran asserts certain issues, events or concepts, and yet the Muhammadans contort, twist and deform these items and try to deceive the public, both the unbelievers as well as the believers. Will you show us some of these important instances? Our audience has come to realize by now the near impossibility of getting through intellectually and or academically to the followers of Muhammad concerning the subjects of Muhammad, his Quran and Hadith. We do understand the three fundamental items that prohibits them from thinking rationally, which are A. Their total and very long-term indoctrination B. Their incredible ignorance of the Bible and other scriptures, since the Quran forbids them from investigating or studying other than the Quran C. And the very real threat of being butchered if they contradict their elders, question their scripture or apostatize. Although we understand their dilemma and predicament, if they are living in Muhammadan Muslim states, nonetheless, those who live and are brought up in the freedom of Western democracies have absolutely no excuse to claim ignorance or fear and remain silent. Let us look now at the two of the most prominent issues that are reflected into the political and religious arena of today, which are the issues of the Jews and their promised land. Whenever useful, I shall recite in Arabic the translated verses for those of the followers of Muhammad who will still claim to have doubts about the veracity of what we prove in our series. Al-Isra 17104 And we said thereafter to the children of Israel, dwell securely in the land of promise. وَقُلْنَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أُسْكُنُوا الْأَرْضَ Al-A'raf 7.137 And we made the people considered weak and of no account, inheritors of land in both east and west lands, whereon we sent down our blessings. The fair promise of the Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel because they had patience and constancy. We took the children of Israel with safety across the sea. The expression inheritance of East and West lands reflects the divine distribution of the land among the tribes of Israel on both sides of the River Jordan. Yunus 10.93 We settled the children of Israel in a beautiful dwelling place and provided for them sustenance of the best. Al-Ma'idah 5.20 Remember Moses said to his people, O my people, call in remembrance the favor of Allah unto you when he produced prophets among you and made you kings and gave you what he had not given to any other among the peoples. O my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned unto you. Ya qawmi, udkhulu al-ard al-muqaddasata al-lati kataba Allahu lakum. Now I would like our listeners to pay very keen attention to the following remarkable verses from two surahs and their explanations at the hands of the Muhammadan translator of the Quran. Al-Isra 17.1 Glory to Allah who did take his servant for journey by night from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque whose precincts we did bless in order that we might show him some of our signs for he is the one who heareth and sees all things. Subhanu alladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه السميع البصير. The translator explains that the furthest mosque must refer to the site of the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. Surah Al-Rum 30.2. The Roman Empire has been defeated in a land close by. غلبة الروم في أدنى الأرض. The translator of the Quran explains to the readers these verses as follows. The remarkable defeat of the Roman Empire under Heraclius in a land close by must refer to Syria and Palestine. Jerusalem was lost in AD 614, shortly before the Surah was revealed. Ladies and gentlemen, please reflect upon what has been written and spoken in the Arabic of the Quran. That Muhammad went on a night journey to the furthest mosque, which is not identified in any manner and yet, the world is deceived into believing that it had to be the Temple of Solomon on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. 
as you all should know by now, the name of Jerusalem is never mentioned in the Quran. Hence, what we have here are pure myths. Let us for an instance assume that the furthest mosque is in the far off land of Judea, Palestina. But lo and behold, the translator of the next verse tells us that the land nearby mentioned in the Quran must be Syria, Palestine. Which case is the true one? Either Jerusalem is very far or it is very near. As far as we know, it cannot be both. Now, the newest followers of Muhammad of the 21st century have moved the goalpost completely by denying the very existence of the Temple of Solomon. They are trying their worst to deny the followers of Moses, the Jews, and the followers of Jesus, the Christians, any religious or political associations with the land of Israel. If this is the case, then they have done us all a great favor by actually agreeing with us that both the Quran and Hadith are lies and falsehoods. As we mentioned before, the followers of Muhammad never miss a chance to miss shooting themselves in the mouth because to cover up one set of lies, they need to create another set and so on and so forth. In the end, when one unravels any part of the chain, the whole edifice of falsehoods and deception breaks down and falls in the gutter where it belonged in the first place. Hence, from both points of view, Muhammad could not have visited Jerusalem. Now we shall address the issue of the chosen people. Al-Baqarah 2.47 O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I, Allah, bestowed upon you and that I preferred you to all others. وَإِنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Al-Baqarah 2.122 O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you and that I preferred you to all others. وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ According to the Quran, it was Allah who preferred the children of Israel above all other peoples. It was not the Israelites, after all, who declared that they were the chosen people. Al-A'raf 7.140 Moses said, Shall I seek for you a God other than the true Allah, when it is Allah who has endowed you with gifts above the nations? وَهُوَ فَضَّلَكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Al-Sajidah 32.23 And certainly we gave the book to Moses, so be not in doubt concerning the receiving of it. And we made it a guide for the children of Israel, and we made of them guiding lights and leaders to guide by our command, as they were patient and they were certain of our communications. In very clear Arabic verses, Allah is declaring that the Torah that he revealed to Moses was a guiding light to the Israelites and the humanity. Al-Dukhan 44.30 We did deliver aforetime the children of Israel from humiliating punishment. And we have chosen them, the children of Israel, above the alameen, mankind and jinn. Al-Jathiyah 45.16 we did aforetime grant to the children of Israel the book, the power of command and prophethood. We gave them for sustenance things good and pure, and we favored them above the nations. وَفَضَّلْنَهُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Repeatedly, in numerous verses as shown, the Quran asserts that it was Allah who did the choosing. It was not the Israelites or the Jews who declared that they were the chosen people, but it was Allah after all who favored the children of Israel and asserted that he favored them above the nations. As usual in our series, we have pointed out the relevant, very clear verses of their Quran to disprove and put to rest the lies and deceptions perpetrated by the followers of Muhammad as they contradict their own holy Quran.